In this Microsoft Excel tutorial, I'm going to show you how I format a basic spreadsheet. I made up some data for us to work with, and I will go through the steps I take to transform this data set into a nice report like this that not only looks good, but is also easy to read and easy to understand. This file is typical of the output from a database when the intention is to use a tool like Excel to format and analyze the information. The steps I'll take will include formatting the table structure with headers and borders, adding data with some simple formulas, and adding some titles and other text. I will begin by selecting the entire worksheet by clicking on the upper left hand corner and then changing the font to Arial and the font size to 10. Arial seems to be my go-to font when I'm working in Excel. I will click somewhere in the first row and go to Insert, Sheet Rows, and Insert one more sheet row. Click somewhere in the left hand column and Insert a column. This just gives me some room to work with. You can see some of the columns are not wide enough to display all of the information. I will select all of the data and go to Format, Auto Fit, Column Width. While the data is still selected, I'll go ahead and put borders around all of the cells. Now we can actually see what we're working with. We have a column header followed by five records. In the first column, we have a college name, followed by the total number of students enrolled at that college, and then this total is broken out into three categories. The number of students who are taking all of their classes on campus, the number who are taking all of their classes online, and the number who are taking some classes on campus and some online. Let's create one header for these three categories by selecting these three cells and clicking on Merge and Center, and then putting a border around it. Double click and type in Students by Class Location. I will expand the total column, double click in the total column header, and arrow over to the end of the word, hold down the Alt key, and press Enter. This will insert a hard return, and then I'll type Students. I just think it will make it more clear if this column header says total students. Now let's format the data itself. I'll select all of the numbers and change them to a comma format, which Excel defaults to two decimal places, so I will decrease those decimal places. Add totals by using a formula equals sum, open parentheses, select the numbers that I want to sum, close parentheses, and press enter. The result of the formula, of course, displays in the cell, but you can see the actual formula above in the formula bar. A quicker way to do this would be to select all the data you want to add, plus an empty cell after it, and then click on auto sum. I can even do this all at once and click on auto sum. It would be helpful to see not only the number of students in each of the three categories, but also the percent of students in each category. I will insert columns to hold this information and enter a formula for the first record equals, click on the first category divided by the total number of students, press enter. and change it to the percent style. Copy and paste. And then repeat this process for the other two categories. Now that we've added columns, let's work on the table structure again. I'll insert a row, type headers for the number and percent, and format these to be size 8, italics, centered, and copy and paste them across. And merge and center each category across both columns. 
the merge and center button acts like a toggle. So in order to merge and center this title across one more column, I'll first click it and it will unmerge it and then click it again to merge it correctly and make sure I have borders everywhere. We have some blank cells here, so I'm going to merge and center the college name vertically. And do the same with the total students. Let's add a double border under the column headers by clicking on the border drop down box and going to more borders, which is the very last option. And I want to put a double line underneath my selection. So I'll click on the double line option and then here, click OK. Let's also put double lines in between the categories. I'll select the second category and then let go of the mouse, hold down the control key, and then select the next category. This time I want the double line to be on the very left hand side of what I've selected. And since I have two separate selections, it'll put a double line here and a double line here. For the total row, I will add some thicker borders above and below it. Select all the columns, go to Format, Auto Fit Column Width. This resulted in the columns being a little bit scrunched together, so I'm going to see what the column width is set to. And this time I'll just click on Column Width, not Auto Fit. It's set to 6.11, so I'll just say OK and select all the columns with numbers and go to Format, Column Width, and change it to 7. See what that looks like. It's not always possible to have all of your columns the same width and sometimes you'll have to do some adjustments. I'll also add some breathing room to these rows. Format, row height. I find that a 16 or 18 works really well for a row height. Add some bold formatting. The table structure looks really good. I will now select four rows and go to insert sheet rows, which will insert four rows. In the upper right hand corner, type in the report number and date. Right align, font size eight, like softer gray for the color. Most organizations have a standard header that they use for their reports. Since this data is just made up, I'll just make up a header, our state college system. I'll make it a slightly smaller font, size 9, and underline it. Enter the title, student enrollment by class location on campus, online, and the time frame, fall semester 2022. And then I'll select this first row, let go of the mouse, hold down the control key, select the next row, let go of the mouse, keep the control key held down, and then select the third row for our three selections and merge and center. Delete this row that we do not need. After adding all these columns and formulas, I want to make sure I did not mess up the data in any way. So I'll go off to the side and just really quickly make sure that the total number of students minus the students in each category results in zero. And then the percentages should all add up to 100% and make sure that's correct for the whole table. And it is. Run a spell check by using the function F7 key. And make sure that the report is formatted to print. All of our formatting so far has been on the home ribbon. I will now go to the page layout ribbon 
and click on Page Setup, and then Print Preview. In the very bottom right-hand corner, you can zoom to the page and just make sure that there's plenty of room around the margins and all of the columns are printing correctly. Everything looks good, so the only change I'll make is under Page Setup, I'll go to the margins and center the report on the page horizontally. And when I click OK, you'll see that it will shift over just a bit. I'll back arrow out of this. For a final step, I like to hide the grid lines. The grid lines are the light gray lines around each cell, and they're really helpful to have while you're formatting a worksheet. But when you're reading a worksheet, they kind of get in the way. So I'll go to the View ribbon and then uncheck Grid Lines. You can see the report immediately looks a lot cleaner and the borders also show up a little better. Let's think about how someone would read this report. We have the report number for reference, our standard header, and a title describing the data. The data table is broken into three sections, the college name, total number of students, and then the students are broken out into three categories. In each category, you can see both the number and the percent of students. Having the percentage here is really helpful. For example, you can quickly see that one college in particular has a large number of students taking classes online. The headers are clear. The only change I would probably make is to add a definition to both to make sure that people understand what that means. So I'll put an asterisk in the column header and then just type both students taking at least one class on campus and at least one class online. I hope this was helpful. If you enjoy learning about working with data, please consider subscribing to this channel.